What's up family? Welcome to another episode of Forecasting the Markets or Weekly Focus. So we're going to be concentrating on NASDAQ, DEX30 and gold for this week of April from the 1st of April to the 5th of April. That's what we're going to be concentrating on to predict that. I'm going to take you along step by step so make sure you're focused and do not skip any parts of this. Okay, so I am on NASDAQ right now on the daily chart. And I just want to break it down for you here. I'm just going to zoom out. Just look at the structure together with myself. Let me know, of course, in the comment section. Let us interact what you think of the markets this week. Where are they going? But of course, in terms of structure, we do have here that well, you know, the market in the previous month, we did actually sort of break structure. And I'm saying the previous month because I see this. In fact, yeah, this is March. So we're in April now. And of course, I did see we did fill in a fair value gap over here uh, to push up in the last few weeks or days of March. And therefore, now we are in April and I want to predict the first week, uh, first week of April, what can we be doing? So it's very easy to conclude where we are from or where we are right now that the market is going to be going upwards, right, in terms of the bullish market. But I want more information, so I'm going to go on uh, the 4 each time frame. And as you can see, this did respect this fair value gap. In fact, we can stretch it across here. It's a fair value gap and a breaker. As I've said on this channel, if there was only one setup that I could trade, it was going to be a fair value gap and an order breaker. That is the most accurate setup ever. So if you're watching this and you don't know how to trade, I've done videos on that. Go check it out. Okay, so we already been printing higher highs. We've already broken higher highs. Therefore, of course, the main thing that people will conclude that the market will do is just buy off from here on. But I see something again that the market might want to uh, do is also fill in another fair value gap. Okay. So we can see that possibly the market may do this, then start buying. But I'm seeing something as well that may actually sell off the market. We do have the supply over here. We do have a beautiful, um, this highs of here that the market has created, as you can see. This can actually be used as liquidity in the markets. So what may actually happen here that I see, since we're still in an uptrend according to the daily time frame, is that the market may actually just buy off from here and then sell off, fill this and then start buying to break the higher high. That's exactly about what may happen, right? But tell me what is your sentiment on NASDAQ. If we can go all the way to the uh, H1, this in fact becomes a little bit more clear in what I'm talking about. In fact, it even has the same uh, setup that we had here, which was a, a breaker and a fair value gap that was filled. And we can see as well, we have a break and a fair value gap over here. So we can actually use the very same thing, but as you can see the closest where we are right now is that supply. So if we can mitigate that supply, take this liquidity, push the market down and then go up. That will be fulfilling the bias that the daily time frame has actually given us. The candlestick there on the daily time frame also says a lot. A lot of people don't pay attention to the candlesticks this is an engulfing bullish candle. Therefore, it does show us that the market is going to be going up. It also does correlate with my analysis to the point that an engulfing candle doesn't just buy off. It, it will have to sell off a bit, 50% and then buy off. Okay, that just comes from trading experience. You can see it's just a bearish candle, but we, we've been really, really bullish. We've imprinted higher highs this is the highest point let me just get rid of this this is the highest point so far that dexterity has actually given us so what i want to do now is actually just so if the market can pull back but again we can't just spot pullbacks on the daily time frame so let me just remove this but that was the fair value gap and we can also see it that it's illustrated okay i want to go to I'm just going to go to a different time frame here that I don't usually use, which is the two hours. And you can clearly see on the two hours, I want to show you something. I'm not saying there's a change of character here, but we don't have it yet. 
So I'm not going to conclude cells, but we have a break of structure. We have that high over there. And what the market may do, we want to actually spike into that high, which can be our supply, as you can see, where Dexdate is already into that supply. We can see the market pulling back from there on. Okay, filling up that demand, then pushing all the way up. We can go all the way to the one hour just to show you this. Okay, so if we can put back to this area here of demand, then definitely we can be going higher according to the trend. Unless it breaks this and does something like a change of character, then we can have this being a bearish market. But for now, according to the daily structure, we should be expecting Dexdity to sort of buy. Okay, but for now, sales for this week. So I believe sales will come in, in even for Nasdaq for this week. We can expect a bit of buys off, and then this uh, during uh, Wednesday or so, we can expect sales or during Thursday because the market is going to start moving as of Tuesday. Okay, let's go to gold. Let me just first go here to the daily. Let's go to gold. Okay. Gold as well has been incredibly bullish for this uh, for this past weeks in March, now in April, and we can clearly see that uh, with this bullish momentum. Now it's quite very difficult to predict this. We're gonna have to have conditions for field in order to have a prediction of what we need. So we'll have to go to the smaller time frames over here, like your one hour, in order to predict this. We don't have any zone higher than this okay we don't have any zone higher than this to sort of mitigate the supply so what we would need or actually have to go to the smaller minutes i would have to go to the smaller minutes in order to actually get uh, this over here so i'm on the 15 minutes we do have a supply over here the market has actually filled that supply Okay, we do have uh, a break of structure here. Okay. So that's a break of structure. I'm gonna just label it B. There we go. Have we broken any change of character? Not yet. So if the market were to break that, then for sure. Okay, so far I can see this giving us um, higher highs, higher lows, lower lower highs, and of course we're on lower lows. So, but if we can break this, then I'm sure we can have the market giving us something like this, pull back to this area, then we can have a downtrend pulling back to a, a good demand level, then that can be really good. The sense that this was the last demand level that the market gave us when it pushed the market up, then for sure, Okay, so on gold, there's no definite prediction whatsoever. I'm just saying that we need to fulfill this condition that we see on the chart first before we can conclude that we're going higher or so forth. So some of the pairs is a little bit difficult, but nevertheless, I believe this has actually blessed you so much when it came to just uh, uh, forecasting this. I was a bit faster on this one, but I know, please do comment down below on what you also predict. Be more descriptive with your answers in terms of what you see for Nasdaq. Don't just say, I see a buy or sell. Be descriptive of which pair you're talking about and so forth. And please do suggest which pairs you want me to predict next or include in our weekly forecast. God bless you. See you on the next episode.